Yeah, as the our friend Angus there had early uh, notice of that, you know. <laughs> it just right. caught it. Can you hear me? Are we good? All right, we're back. Awesome. Yay. All right. So let me find. There we go. All right, we're good. We see it? Yep, sure do. Awesome. So like I said, my name is Mark. My skins uh, work as the sales and support supervisor for Name Hero. Um, we're a um, hosting provider specializing in anything from shared to reseller to VPS to cloud ded dedicated servers. Um, where we go different is that we, are, we build our stack instead of using the traditional Apache, MySQL type configuration that most hosts use, we use um, Alternatives, we use Lightspeed instead of Apache. We use uh, MariaDB instead of MySQL, which overall gives us better performance as far as in a shared environment. Um, we were founded in 2015 and um, during the pandemic have been able to expand rapidly and we currently have over 500,000 websites. So um, quite some growth within the last year or two. Um, Due to you know the pandemic, unfortunately. So um, so what's Lightspeed? Uh, like I've said, Lightspeed is basically it's a you can consider it a, a drop-in replacement for a, Apache. Um, while there's alternatives like Nginx, for example, uh, Nginx is not compatible with things like an HT access file, which is something that's commonly used in WordPress. Um, it involves if you're on an Apache server and you're moving to an Nginx server, it, it requires essentially rewriting those rules. So it's not really something that's friendly to use in a shared environment um, versus Lightspeed. Lightspeed is fully drops in as a replacement to Apache and does support uh, HT access rules. So it, it pretty much gives you the performance increase without needing uh, to, you know, to learn something new, like using something like Nginx would. Um, Lightspeed also has what they call Quick Cloud. Uh, Quick Cloud is essentially their, their CDN, their, their content delivery network. And where it shines is um, unlike certain CDNs like Cloudflare, which does advertise that they are HTTP3 compliant and enabled, it's not full HTTP3 when you're using Cloudflare. Cloudflare essentially uses HTTP3 uh, between the viewer and their servers, but they're not using HTTP3 on the back end. So Lightspeed's CDN um, is essentially the first to have full HTTP3 compatibility from the viewer to the servers to, sorry, from, from the viewer to the CDN to the edge server. Uh, which just basically speeds up the whole um, request overall, essentially. So now that I got some buzzwords out of the way, um, we'll start talking about things to check before performing a migration. Um, the first thing you, you definitely want to pay attention to is your DNS, uh, how you decide to do your DNS if you have your domain uh, currently pointed to um, your, your existing host, for example, you obviously you want to point it to your no, new host. If you're pointing it to like Cloudflare's name servers, for example, you'll you'll want to take into consideration. All right, are, am I going to you know switch to Quick Cloud CDN to integrate things all together? Am I going to point to the host name servers? Um, so just the general idea of, of where you want to go with your DNS is something you want to consider before uh, you would initiate a, a migration, essentially. Uh, the next thing to keep in mind is your cache plugins, the cache plugin you're currently using. Um, you know, on an, on an Apache server, for example, you might be using like WP Rocket, which is a great plugin overall. Um, it's not the best to use when you move to a Lightspeed server. Uh, Lightspeed Cache, their plugin does uh, generally um, perform better than WP Rocket, for example, um, as well as, you know, some providers out there um, have their own um, 
cache plugin for like example, uh, Cloudways has Breeze. Um, so you, you want to take in consideration after the migration, um, what your plans are as far as your, your cache. Um, the next thing to consider is your email. Email's huge, definitely. Uh, you don't want any downtime. Um, if your host, if you're currently using your web host for your email, um, it's a good time to consider what you want to do. Do you want to move it to your new host and, and continue with that? Uh, do you want to split off your email to a, a, a provider like Google, for example, and host your email externally? Um, generally, you just want to consider your email. Uh, you know, If you're switching to your host and you're going to point to the new host's name servers and use them for email, they're going to have the proper DNS records already in there. Um, if you're going to end up pointing your domain to your host name servers and continue using Google. You, you definitely want to go into the DNS zone and make sure you're pointing those DNS records to Google apps before you point the name servers over else you're going to be having some hard times with your email once you're done with that. The uh, next thing, which is, which is huge, uh, your PHP version. Uh, frequently, you know, a lot of sites, even still to this day, uh, PHP 4 is still being used a lot, strangely. Um, and even so, you want to you want to make sure you know what the default uh, PHP version is that your hosting provider is going to use, and if necessarily, they're going to want to change that to match what you, what you're expecting um, prior to going live. And that's another thing too. You you definitely want to do some QA checks after after the migration and before going live. Um, to make sure you're not gonna have any problems. And there's actually a, a slide I'll go into that later on a bit as well. So overall, as far as migrating, there's a there's a few ways to do it. The first one simply is, you know, ask your host. <laughs> a lot of hosts in general will do uh, free migrations for you. Um, unless, I should say most in the shared hosting environment, when you're going from shared to shared, uh, that's generally one of those services that they offer. Um, if you have the ability, if you're, using cPanel currently and you're moving to a cPanel host or just in general, any sort of like control panel to the same control panel. A lot of those options, a lot of them have the ability where you can create a backup of the full account, such as your full cPanel account. And then you can essentially just upload that to your new provider and then ask them to restore it. And that's a good way that migrates the entire cPanel account. So that would move over any custom DNS records, any email accounts, any subdomains. It just moves everything over in one chunk. If there's multiple domains on there, it moves them as well. It just simplifies the whole, whole process drastically um, if you're moving between uh, the same providers. Um, if that's not an option, uh, you'd always have the manual FTP method. You can transfer your files manually over FTP. Um, some proprietary control panels will allow you to zip your files using their control panel, which will then allow you, you can essentially download that one zip file and then upload the zip file to your new host and ask them to extract it. Um, and then you'll have to also manually take care of your, your database. Um, a lot of hosting providers uh, whether you're using cPanel or you're using some sort of proprietary hosting panel, they're going to have an option for PHP My Admin, which if it's not something you've used before, it's basically just a tool to manage your database, uh, allow you to export a copy of your database, and then you can use PHP My Admin um, at your new host to import it into a new database. And then the last method, which is basically what we're going to cover today, is you can use a WordPress plugin, for example. Uh, duplicator, jet backup, and my favorite is the, the all-in-one migration plugin, which is kind of what I'm going to demo today. Um, so going back to, to doing QA checks, obviously you don't want to just point your domain name to the, your new host and pray that it's working. So there, there's various options um, to test your website before pointing your domain name to your new host. Um, the most common method is what's called your host file. It's a file on your local computer. And you basically say, uh, for this domain name, point it to this IP. So that basically allows you to load your website from your new host um, 
without affecting everyone else's routing. So it's a, it's a good way to test it. There's also various third-party services like uh, host.cx. Uh, they provide you with a preview link, basically. Uh, you, tell them your to you tell them your domain, uh, you tell them the IP of the new server, and they give you a simple uh, demo, demo link you can use to preview the site. Basically works like a proxy. Uh, and that's a good way if you're if you're having someone else preview the new site uh, without having them explain the technical way, the host file way would be the more technical way. The host CX way would be the more um, user friendly way if you were sending it to like a, a, a client that wasn't as technical, essentially. Um, so let's uh, turn off my slides and we'll go to. Uh, we'll log into I'm going to log into a WordPress. This is just a demo site I set up. And I don't know my password, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to log into the host real quick. <laughs> very easily. I was logged in beforehand, but go and figure. I got timed out. So let's log into the old host. Um, this basically was just a trial account. I signed up just as an example nothing specific about this certain host I'm logging into. There we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the all-in-one WordPress migration plugin. And that's generally, generally it's, it's a free plugin, easy to use. Um, there is a file size limit um, on the free version. Um, can't remember what it is. It works for in 99% of the cases though. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly large limit on the free plugin. And if not, the, the premium plugin is definitely definitely worth it in my opinion um i think it's 300 megabytes is it yeah i think yeah it's, it's fairly it's fairly reasonable um you can actually use uh the there's an older version of the all-in-one migration plugin as well that doesn't have a quota um which you can find fairly easy um okay. on google if you search it <laughs> oh, we'll leave it at that <laughs> so i already inst i already installed the uh, all-in-one migration plugin so we're going to go into the plugin now. And we're going to export it to a file. And that's that. So basically, we can click on this now. And this will download the full copy of the entire WordPress site. Um, let me close that out. So once we have that, we can log into the um, Do you have a plugin that you like if you were to bump up against that limit? I have the uh, I, I use the old version of the plugin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just don't uh, just don't leave it installed after the fact because um, right. it is it is an older version. You don't know if it's vulnerable completely. Yeah. Um, I bumped up against that limit a few times and I started using WP Vivid. Pretty I've, easy. I've heard of it. I just haven't, uh, yeah. haven't I, since I have that older version of the plugin available, yeah. where you set it to unlimited. Um, I, I, I usually just roll with that. But yeah, yeah, like I said, there is definitely a bunch of plugins out there. <clears> it's <throat> kind of like uh, all in one is a pretty old plugin as far as being around for a while. So it's kind of like one of those things that yeah. I've started with and never really changed methods since it just works. So now we're now that I have the backup saved, I'm logged into a completely new hosting account. And so we're going to install WordPress. Uh, in our case, 
we have what's called soft tech list available, which is an application library. It's a simple way to install apps with just a couple of clicks of your mouse. So we're going to install WordPress. We'll just leave things as the default. Install it. <clears throat> and it's installed. So we'll go ahead and click into WordPress. And then with our fresh WordPress install, I, I'm doing this on a different URL. And in this case, just to simplify things, um, you can obviously um, use the host record method I, I spoke about earlier to, to point your actual same domain to your to your uh, new host locally uh, so that you could work based off the same domain um, in most cases. Uh, in this case, I'm just using a different domain just to, to simplify the thing a little bit. So we're going to install um, the all-in-one migration plugin. Let's see. Like that. And then we're going to import it. That looks like the 512 is looks like the one. Oh, that, there you go. Okay. Import a file. Um, that's the one I downloaded. So this is generally when you uh, you take your coffee break as you watch it load. There, there's really no visual. You just watch the bar. In this case, I'm going to actually stop it and switch cPanel counts because this site's about 400 megs and would take a, a little while to download or to upload. So in the, in the essence of time, we're going to switch over to WP2. And this is what we have after after that would have completed importing. Um, we're going to go into our plugins. Uh, we don't need the all in one migration, so we're going to go ahead and deactivate and delete it. We don't need the the prior caching module, so we're going to delete that. And then we have a uh, complete migration for the most part here, which uh, if I would have done it in real time would have added about 10 minutes to, to upload the site. It was a couple hundred megabytes. So it, it's fairly simple to copy it overall. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do some basic Lightspeed cache stuff now just to make sure everything's as, as fast as possible. So the Lightspeed uh, web server has a WordPress plugin called Lightspeed Cache. It basically works in conjunction with uh, Lightspeed on the server level. And it has pretty much some of the same um, optimization sex, uh, settings as you would expect to see in, in most other cache related plugins. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to general. First thing we're going to do is we're going to request a, a domain key. Domain key is generally how it, you can tie the domain itself into um, Quick Clouds, which is Lightspeed CDN. Um, not going to go through the complete CDN setup because it it it's kind of a bit lengthy. But um, if anyone's interested in setting up the Quick Cloud CDN, um, we do have a 
pretty detailed video that my boss actually did on our YouTube channel. If you search Name Hero on YouTube, uh, one of our recent videos does go over how to set up uh, the Quick Cloud CDN. And he does a pretty good job of explaining that. Um, what I do want to en enable is object caching. That's a, that's definitely a benefit. Lightspeed cache gives you the option if you want to configure object caching as either using memcache or Redis. Uh, there's pros and cons again between both. Uh, in most cases, I recommend using memcache. So that's what we're going to leave it on. And we're going to save that. Then we're also going to enable browser caching. Turn that on as well. The next option on the menu is CDN. This is like where I mentioned, uh, this is where you would enable the CDN portion of it. Another, another benefit of Lightspeed Cache, this is a fairly image intense website. Um, Lightspeed Cache does have an image optimization section. So if we go under settings here, we can turn on the auto request cron for image optimization. You also have the option if you like to do WebP images, you can turn on the ability to create WebP versions automatically as well as replace them automatically. So we'll turn those on as well. Let's see what else we got. So we're gonna go down to the page optimization. So there's there's certain things like CSS and JS uh, minification and combining. Um, these settings generally, you, you'll wanna test them um, after enabling just to make sure that it's not causing any issues. There is issues that can occur when you combine or minify your JSS or your JS or your CSS. Um, so you two definitely wanna Do that as well. So once we once we do that, we pretty much have it optimized. So we can go actually to back to the dashboard of Lightspeed Cache now, and let's do a, a page load test. See what it says. Oh, there we go. So yeah, based on the optimizations, it says it's basically telling us that without the Lightspeed Cache settings, it was loading about two seconds. The previous server that I was actually testing it on, uh, I was running some pingdom tests beforehand, and it was pretty much around two seconds as well. But after the Lightspeed optimization, the browser caching and everything, it, it makes a pretty noticeable uh, uh, performance difference, a huge boost, especially in a shared environment that equates to less CPU and less memory usage, which basically saves you money with having to uh, perform an upgrade, uh, you know, keep you on a smaller plan without having to spend money unnecessarily. Um, so that's really it as far as migrating and, and some of the basic settings. Um, I do have another example. Um, this is over on our help section. Uh, in this case, this 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 was an example my boss actually performed. Um, pretty similar testing, similar changes as I just did. However, he also went above and did um, the Quick Cloud CDN configuration as well. In this case, his uh, example site was loading at 2.61 seconds. Um, and then he configured the plugin essentially similar as what I just did and installed the Quick Cloud CDN. And he, after enabling the CDN, got it down to, where's the magic? Boom, there it is. You got it down from two seconds to 391 milliseconds with their CDN. So it, it's a pretty huge difference. Um, you know, we've have customers of ours that have historically used Cloudflare and have tested both uh, Cloudflare versus Quick Cloud. And um, you know, Quick Cloud, while they're a newer CDN, you know, they've recently came out of beta within the last few weeks. They're they're having some huge uh, performance increases compared to Cloudflare, um, at least as far as what we're seeing. Um, another perk of 
switching to a server using uh, Lightspeed, if you do decide to use Quick Cloud, um, their pricing does depend on the type of server. If you're moving to a server that uses uh, Lightspeed itself, you do qualify for 10 gigabytes of free bandwidth, um, which is again one of those things that's it's, it's enough bandwidth for um, you know most folks. So you're, you're not paying for um, you know additional bandwidth for what you don't need. If for some reason you do need more than 10 gigabytes of bandwidth, um, their system works based off credits, um, and you basically buy credits in bulk, um, and it, it equates for you know, sense for, for what the performance is worth. Um, you know, if 10 gigabytes of bandwidth isn't enough, um, it's definitely worth paying for it. Uh, so um, I think that's really about all I had. Um, hopefully I didn't talk too fast. I didn't know if anyone had any, any questions. Yeah, you talked about something that you can install on your local computer. I assume that's in your browser. Uh, it's called your host file. So let me, um, yeah, let me, um, let me pull up this example. I don't want to open mine up because I have a bunch of customer stuff in it, but yeah. So there's a host file on your computer itself. An example, it's, um, there's the Mac location on it. There's also a Windows it, it, on in, on a Windows computer is inside of System 32, and you basically put an entry that looks like this. So Oops. the new server IP, and then your domain, and then your server IP, and then the, the www version of your domain. So what that happens if I was to if I did that entry and I was to type in yourcooldomain.com, it would load from that server the 6491 server, regardless how the name servers are pointed to that. So everyone else around the world would still be seeing that domain name from the old server, but on my computer, I'll be seeing it loading from the new server. So I'll be able to test it fully and be able to make sure it works before making any DNS changes that anyone else can see. That's cool. Where can you show that where the, uh, where the, it is on a Mac? Yeah. Where so, um, let me open up. You, I think you scrolled past it, didn't you? Or it's that it's in the etc. folder. Yeah. Okay, so that's and yeah, if you if you open it from terminal, you gotta make sure you uh do sudo and open it as with admin rights to be able to modify it. Same with uh same with Windows. When you navigate to the the host file, you need to right click and run as admin um, to make sure you have the the permission to save the changes. And then I was also mentioning host.cx. There's another way to preview it. You basically type in, um, you, know, you type in IP and go uh, cooldomain.com. And it's the same thing. It, it generates a temporary URL where if I was to go there, it's going to load that domain off that website. It's basically, a, basically proxies it off the new server. So I could essentially send that to you without having to explain how to do a host file. Um, so there's pros and cons of both. I, I normally, when I'm, when I'm migrating a website, if, if I have to use the all-in-one migration plugin, I obviously don't want to point someone's domain name to our, to our name servers before, before, you know, importing it essentially. So in that case, I can create a host file record on my system and install WordPress fresh and, and import it that way. I basically work on it like it was pointed to the name servers without actually pointing to the name servers. That's pretty handy. Yeah. That host.cx thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has it has some flaws. There's some there's some issues with SSL, for example, when you use that site. Um, it, but it's it works most of the time fairly well. <laughs> yeah. So that's really that was really all all I had. Um, no, I did add a promo code if anyone's interested in trying out Lightspeed or just a new host in general. You know, promo code. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> it'll give you, it'll give you seventy five percent off. Just the just a little special. Um, or if anyone wants to contact me with any 
with any questions post being related, you know, feel free to contact me. Um, that is, uh, I am here local in Citrus Heights. I know that's an 816 number, but I am local. <laughs> that's just a work line. But that's my information. Um, if you want to have any questions later on and reach me. Anybody have any questions? There must be some. <laughs>